Hi, and thank you for visiting my channel again. I want to begin this video with a nice story I heard recently. Three frogs started a long and complicated race. Surrounded by an audience shouting, It's too hard! You can't do it! Many tried and no one succeeded! And things like that. The first frog gave up after a few minutes and retired from the race. The second frog took a few more minutes until he eventually gave up. But the third frog kept going till the end, despite the crowd's shouts and despite all the voices trying to suppress him. It turns out, the frog was deaf. It may sound like a nice or funny story to you, but it's reality. Our thoughts have tremendous power. Sentences like, I can or I can't, have an amazing effect on the body, our physical and mental ability, especially beliefs and perceptions of ourselves. While the first two frogs, having heard the oppressive voices, obeyed them and gave up, the last frog simply did not hear them. That's why he did not lose hope. And this is what our video is about today. Hope. If you still think it's just a nice story, think again. An amazing study on mice that took place in 1950 by Professor Kurt Richter from Harvard University demonstrates the importance of positive thinking and hope in our lives. He took 34 mice, placed them inside of a jar full of water, and left them to examine how long they were able to swim until they gave up and drowned. The mice tried to swim, struggling with all their power to get out of the jar, but in vain. After 15 minutes, some gave up and drowned to death. Kurt left half of them to die, to make sure that is the maximum they can swim, and the other half he saved, allowing them a few days of rest. Then he performed the experiment again. How long do you think they swam this time? Two or three minutes more? You are wrong. Their average was to double the time they swam at least three times. What made their bodies gain such ability? What caused their muscles not to give up and keep fighting? The answer is that these mice simply realized that the situation was not hopeless. So they managed to fight for their lives. They waited for someone to save them, just like last time. They saw hope at the end of the tunnel and that gave them power. The possibility that someone would come and save them gave them insane strength to keep swimming. They did not lose hope. In our life, we experience many moments of hopelessness. And sometimes we let ourselves drop into these situations. How does it affect us, and why do we have to find hope in every situation? So we can accustom ourselves to positive thinking, regardless of the circumstances. Professor David Feldman spent more than a decade of his life searching this issue. He found that hopeless people are more likely to suffer from depression and anxiety, high cholesterol levels and high blood pressure, compared to hopeful people whom, in addition, feel even less pain compared to others. It turns out that hope also helps improving daily function. Hopeful people are enthusiastic when it comes to performing a task. They see it as a challenge that they are willing to face, take responsibility for, and even give meaning to. While people with low hopeful thinking recoil from tasks and are afraid of them, they feel helplessness and frustration, which increases their difficulties until complete avoidance of coping. If hope and positive thinking can provide us with physical and mental strength and improve our daily lives, perhaps we should take a moment to think about what negative thinking might do to the body. In 1974, Clifton Mydor, a doctor from Nashville, treated Sam Lund, who suffered from esophageal cancer, a disease that was considered fatal at the time. Following Sam's recovery, all doctors knew that the cancer would reappear, and indeed it returned. It was not surprising that Lund died of the disease several weeks after the diagnosis. Surprisingly, after his death, when the body was dissected, very few cancer cells were found. Not enough to cause his death. Moreover, the cancer appeared in the liver and not in the esophagus at all, and in such a small quantity that it does not even cause the death. After his death, his doctor said, he died with cancer, not because of cancer. What actually caused Lund to die? This matter bothered Dr. Clifton even after 30 years. When he said to Discovery Health Channel, I thought he was terminally ill. He thought he was terminally ill. Everyone around him thought he was terminally ill. Did we somehow shatter hope? So the question arises, is hope and positive thinking genetic or hereditary, or can it be practiced? I will not leave you hopeless and tell you that unlike a dream or a fantasy, hope is a cognitive skill that can be practiced. It can be learned and taught. 
Actually, what we call emotions and instincts are just a bunch of chemical reactions that take place in the nervous system in the brain, which is constructed through our inner experiences and beliefs, which determines a part of who we are today and what we will be in the future. In another video, I will show you how you can exercise hope and acquire it as a habit. For now, it is important that you remember, hope is a power. When we have it, it can carry us. When we don't, we can drown. And true, there is a difference between humans and mice. But at the end, we all have one thing in common. We all need a reason to keep swimming. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell button. Please leave a comment and let me know what you think about this video. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned.